everyone and welcome back to Little Books Great Stories. Today we're going to read Beatrix Potter Scientist. Let's learn about the great Beatrix Potter, a writer, scientist, artist, and so much more. Please make sure to subscribe to Little Books Great Stories if you haven't already, and let's start reading. Beatrix Potter Scientist You may know this girl, or who she'll become. Someone who makes pictures of cuddly animals and writes your bedtime stories. But there's more to her story. She observes, questions, collects, records. Beatrix is a girl of science, even if she may not know it yet. See her there, giggling and splashing in the steps of the whistling postman? Her dirty boots carry him on mail routes past miles of mushrooms and moss. He can't help but look and learn from the lush landscape edging the Scottish highlands. Nature enchants Beatrix, too. She absorbs lessons on art and photography so she can capture every rock, every flower, everything. This way, she can take Scotland home. Back on the outskirts of London, Beatrix sneaks nature inside, past her mother, past the staff. A bit older now, Beatrix and her brother Bertram fill their nursery with bunnies and bats and newts, snakes and frogs and mice. But when the animals die, after she cries, she removes their flesh to admire their bones. There's care in every measurement. From head to fingers to tail, Beatrix draws them again and again, outside and in. That's science. Now a young woman, Beatrix stows her specimens in London and sets off into the countryside with her family. She grabs her sketchbook and roams through northern England and Scotland, eyes open to the world so wide. Always, she wants to copy any beautiful object which strikes the eye. Sometimes, she adds a twist of whimsy. Always, she writes. Look there! What does Beatrix see? Tiny fungus people singing and bobbing and dancing. She blinks away the vision of fairies trotting among the toadstools. But thousands of mushrooms remain. Joy of joys, she writes. They hold mystery on their own. She peers closer and sees the colors. She slices, sketches, and scopes. Every gill, every scale, every spore. The microscope reveals a new world. Beatrix can't stop drawing. Who will understand? Probably not her parents. They have equipped her with cameras and experiences and tutors, but school is for Bertram. Who will understand? The Scottish postman, of course! The man she knew when she was little more than a spore herself. The shy postman who stashes plants in his satchel so he can study them at home. Beatrix and Charles Mackintosh discuss how to draw dainty details under the microscope how to classify each fungus by name. They promise to share their work. Beatrix's train returns to the city. Soon, a piece of Scotland arrives in London. Beatrix tears open the package from Charlie and inhales a mushroom scent of fresh-cut hay. Curiously strong and pleasant, she writes, and paints the samples with delicate strokes. Then she mails her artwork to Charlie. Perhaps if Beatrix draws enough, learns enough, her art could fill a science book someday. It's acceptable for Victorian women like Beatrix to excel at painting. Beatrix hopes to earn money and freedom from her parents' rule, even if by selling silly pictures of rabbits wearing coats. Back in the country, Beatrix tugs up her starched dresses and trudges through the bogs, woodlands, and dung where mushrooms bloom. She has questions. How do fungi survive the winter? Do they spread underground? Is it true that spores sprout like seeds? She wrecks her parents' London kitchen in her hunger for answers. She concocts
concocts a solution to nudge the spores to life. Toiling day and night in her ramshackle lab, Beatrix zooms in with a microscope to check and record her specimens. She can taste the breakthrough that is sure to come. Finally, yes! Spores do sprout like seeds, and Beatrix is among the first to grow them in Britain. Before long, the sprouts tangle in a network of filaments called mycelium. This must be the underground form Beatrix envisioned! To be sure, she exhausts herself studying dense volumes on fungi written in German. Then Beatrix drafts her findings for all of science to share. A prominent natural history society could publish her paper, but it's the 1890s, and these London scientists do not allow women to join them. Beatrix believes her work is too important to keep to herself. She earns a ticket to enter the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew and mingles with some of Britain's best botanists. But most of the plant scientists there dismiss her as an amateur. Beatrix may not be a professional, but she has pluck. She returns again and again, at first jumpy as a bunny, then growing braver like a bull. She knows of a well-published scientist who can help, if she can convince him. Her heart pounds. She clutches her slides and marches up to George Massey, one of the people in charge of Q's plant specimens. George has been trying to germinate spores with no luck. He peers through his spectacles with uncertainty. George cannot deny that Beatrix has sprouted more than 40 kinds of spores. He decides to try her methods. Finally, success! George agrees to present Beatrix's paper at a society meeting. She waits for news. What is happening behind those doors? George returns with a disappointing message about Beatrix's paper. They say it requires more work, she writes to her old friend Charlie. So she withdraws her paper, rallies her resolve, and returns to her lab. She sprouts more, observes more, draws more, until she doesn't. What makes her stop? Does she suspect that she will never be taken seriously as a scientist? Does she begin to doubt herself? Like pages ripped from a book, history holds those secrets. But the next chapter is all there. Beatrix Potter steps into the sunshine and tries something else, something not altogether different. She pulls out an old letter, one with pictures. A young friend had been sick in bed and needed some good cheer. Her bunny, her Peter Rabbit, looks so real on paper he nearly hops off the page. This is no leap for Beatrix, even as she tucks away her fungi paintings for good. She doesn't forget what she knows of nature. She follows her muse to a place where science informs art, a place of whimsy grounded in fact. Beatrix has studied every detail of her world, small and big, flower and fungus, inside and out, and molded it all into something new, so she could share it with you and the whole world through. Thank you so much for listening to today's Read Aloud. Please come back again next week for another great story here at Little Books Great Stories. Bye!